Welcome to Fireside Giants. My name is Alex. Today, I'm going to talk about Giants, Rams. This is going to be a tough one for us, guys. Week six, honestly, every game right now is a must-win game. Unfortunately, the Giants are one and four, and we're staring another losing season in the face. Rams, really, really good team that it's it's going to be pretty much impossible to stop them on offense. I think they're a top six ranked offense right now, averaging over 28 points per game. You know, they're a top 10 passing offense. Running attack has been, you know, so-so at times. But with Matthew Stafford, Cooper Cup, Robert Woods, you really can't stop them all. This Giants defense has struggled. They're bottom half of the league, bottom 10, bottom five in points a lot per game. So ultimately, how do you stop the Rams? You don't. You have to match them offense, score for score. No more field goals. They need touchdowns. The Giants got blown out 44-20 last week against Dallas. That cannot happen again. You need to be a little bit better on the offensive side of the ball, but I do want to talk about, <laughs> this is awesome. I want to talk about Jabril Peppers and that guy's energy, man. If he doesn't match the fan base, he's an absolute clown. This guy came out firing when I talk about his quote right now against Dallas and apparently J. Ron curse <laughs> and apologies if I'm like stumbling over myself. I have bronchitis and I'm trying to fight through that right now, but uh, anything for you guys, that's always trying to keep you guys informed and up to date for any Giants news. But today, you know, Jabril Peppers said some hilarious stuff. And, and you know, his hate for the Dallas Cowboys is why I want this guy to be a long-term giant. I really want him to be successful on this defense. Um, but what he had to say was hilarious. He says, I mean, it's the Cowboys. It's the, <laughs> he said, I mean, it's Cowboys, Giants. Fuck them. They hate us. We hate them. They got the better of it. They can do what they want to do. But I'm kind of mad and happy I wasn't there when Engram got, when Engram got hit because I probably would have been fined. Oof. That's different from football now. You know what I mean. I have to say, you know, Engram getting punched in the face after the game by J. Ron Curse, pretty low blow considering J. Ron Curse went and helped Daniel Jones. Um, you know, after uh, Evan Ingram must have been talking a lot of smack. I don't know why or, or the reason behind it, but Jabril Peppers' answer is always hilarious. Just such a clown. Um, and I love the fact that these guys really got some fight. The rivalry between the Giants and Dallas is definitely uh, very much alive. And that's really exciting because, you know, we, we haven't had much to be excited about, but at least an intense game full of energy and, um, and kind of hostility is fun for us as fans. But I will say, you know, I'd like to get on the top or the, the, the better side of that every now and then and extract some wins. Uh, but this Giants team, you know, heading up, uh, you know, heading up against this game against the Rams, not easy. You know, I have the Rams projected to win this game. Last time I had a team projected to win, uh, it was against the Saints. And the Giants somehow managed to extract a victory out of that one. So really, really tough. But the Rams, no pushover. They currently host one of the league's best offenses, scoring an impressive 20.2 points per game on average, including the second best passing yards per game at 310.2 yards. If the Giants want to keep this game competitive, they have. Uh, they'll have to win the turnover battle. That's first and foremost. Got to win the turnover battle because at the end of the day, if you can at least win that and turn those turnovers into points, you can give your team, your offense, your defense a little bit of an advantage. Winning time of possession is important, but without Saquon, without Kenny Galladay, how do you really scheme um, these guys open? I think a lot of rub routes, the Sterling Shepard and Kadarius Tony. I think those two actually could be a very unique and, and, and fruitful combination for the Giants offense and Jason Garrett. I want to see a lot of rub routes. I want to see a lot of bunch formations, spread the offense out at times, you know, get them really uh, to spread out and open up space, right? I love the empty set spread formation with Kadarius Tony involved because if you spread out the offense, you're utilizing a lot more space um, in the opposing secondary, which really opens up the middle of the field. It opens up uh, screen passes. You know, you have to have defenders spreading out all over the place, so you have a lot of room to work with. I think that's where Kadarius Tony really can make his money, make his living um, in space. You know, if you give him just a second, two seconds of space before a defender gets there, that's all he needs to make a play. So I really hope that they can do that. Uh, for Kadarius. And, you know, I really actually would like to see Jalen Ramsey match up against him in this game um, at cornerback. You know, of course, one of the best, if not the best corner in the league. I like, I'd like to see Kadarius Tony getting that type of attention already because ultimately we want to see him beat number one receivers or, or corners rather. And Jalen Ramsey's been playing a lot in the slot too. So some people may think, you know, he's a boundary corner. He's not playing in the slot. He's actually playing like 50 50 slot and boundary. So Kadarius Tony moving around a lot. They may just say, you know what, Ramsey? Just man mark their hot hand. It could be Sterling Shepard, could be Kadarius Tony. Other whoever is not uh, on Ramsey should be getting a lot of snaps. But I also think that putting Tony in motion and getting kind of a unique, um, you know, scheme and strategy out of him, maybe use some wildcat, get it, get creative with how they use Kadarius Tony. Maybe use him as a as a quarterback. Maybe let him throw downfield. Apparently, he threw a seventy yard pass in uh in practice a couple days ago. Guy can just do it all, man. I'd love to see them really get unique with it and try to extract some of those, you know, low key skills. But the Giants' defense, 
that's a unit that needs to stand up and they need to stand out big time. They allowed 525 yards last week, including 200 yards on the ground and 325 through the air. Quarterback Dak Prescott threw three touchdowns. It's unacceptable, right? You know, when you're scoring 20 points and allowing 44, there's no way you're going to be, you know, winning games ultimately. And for, for this Giants team, it boils down to consistency and discipline. They need to string some wins together. They need to beat some good teams. You know, beating bad teams is all fine and dandy. You know, the Saints win was a really big one, really put them on the map for a second there. But, you know, then getting blown out by Dallas brought us back down to earth and said to us, this team is not even close. You know, they're not even close in terms of discipline and execution. The defense looks like they should be playing those you know, soft zone, cover two, um, you know, coverage, but it seems like they're playing a lot of cover one. They're leaving James Bradbury on the outside with fast receivers. He's getting burned and toasted. Um, he's, he's been missing a lot of tackles. This entire defense missing a lot of tackles. Major weak point being run stopping, which Patrick Graham said and blew up over last week. He was like, or this past week, really, he was like, you know, we need to stop the run better. If we don't stop the run early in the game, opposing offenses have the flexibility now open their offense up past the football, and it becomes a big, big, uh, you know, kind of a shooting contest where now you're passing on both sides. Running games can't be established, especially if they're just running on passing all over you like Dallas did. Such a good offensive line. We just couldn't stop them. Rams as well have a really good offensive line. Andrew Whitworth, who is like, seems like he's 70 years old and has gray hair, is still a freaking animal at left tackle. They have a good unit there. Um, and, and you know, stopping Matthew Stafford, he can make all the throws, right? He's a absolute monster quarterback. I really like him. I think he's one of the most underrated quarterbacks in the league, um, or at least he was before he went to L.A., and he's a guy that can make all the throws, man. He can hit those hole shots. He can he can throw it deep. He can throw it on the run, on the move. He can do the no-look passes across the field. The guy can do it all, you know? So the Giants, how do you stop him? You have to put pressure on. The Giants are like bottom five in pass rush win weight this year. Lorenzo Carter, Ocean Exhibit is not playing to potential. Aziz Ojolari has a couple sacks, but ultimately not doing enough. Interior pass rush. Leonard Williams actually has, having a decent season. People I see a lot of people attacking him. He's not doing that bad. Um, he just doesn't have any help around him, man. The outside linebackers are a mess. They can't steal the edge against the run, and they can't rush the passer. This upcoming draft, you better believe the Giants are going to be looking at pass rushes with one of those first-round picks because we're going to need one. A big pass rusher, an offensive lineman, all day. That's money. So that's how I feel about you know this offensive line for the Rams. going to be tough. Again, the Giants really, really are in a tough spot right now because the Rams, ESPN's football power index gives them a 69.1% chance of emerging victorious. Um, you know, Sean McVay, of course, isn't going to underwrite the Giants at all. He's going to prepare that team to win. Um, but this should be a really easy game for the Rams. You know, if you're if you're uh, an un, an unbiased, a bipartisan kind of uh, fan, or you know, this is a, a game that the Rams don't lose. The Giants are a pushover team at this point. It's hard to say. It's tough to say as a fan and you know someone that covers this team daily, but. At the end of the day, the Giants just aren't good enough, man. They don't, they're not disciplined enough on the football field. The coaching staff, there's there's a couple of positions here that are weak, but I will say Kadarius Tony's a bright spot. They're milking him on social media, man. They're they're showing everything they can. Um, getting him excited, posting him on all their all their social media posts and whatnot to get us ready uh to watch him play. Again, he's the only bright spot silver lining of this season so far. Him and the progression of Daniel Jones and Andrew Thomas. And I'll tell you this: the Giants will lose this game if Andrew Thomas does not play. Daniel Jones slated to play, you know, he's coming off the concussion, obviously. Uh, not ideal for him, but hell, you know, we need Andrew Thomas in there. If Nate Soldier's playing left tackle, Daniel Jones is gonna get eaten alive again. Really unfortunate, but you know, in my opinion, the way you beat the Rams, if there was ever an opportunity, you got to put pressure on the quarterback. You got to give your coverage some sort of help there, man. You cannot give uh, Matthew Stafford all day back there. He will pick you apart if he's not under pressure. Seattle did a decent job at times getting after him last week. Um, they've had a long week, right? They're, they're playing last two Thursdays ago, and they're coming now a week and a half basically on rest. So sometimes teams can get a little bit, uh, their flow gets messed up. Um, they're also three hours behind, so their kickoff is at 10 a.m. Maybe that's an advantage. I don't really think so because teams do that all the time. Not really that big of a deal in my opinion. Especially, I mean, 10 a.m., I mean, most people are at work for an hour by by not, uh, 10 a.m. Uh, during the week. So I don't think that a, a 10 a.m. kickoff makes any difference uh, for the Rams, like some people might be saying or mentioning. But end of the day, Giants is going to be Kadarius Tony show. I'm starting him in my fantasy league. I would recommend you do the same absolutely start them in your fantasy leagues but guys we also have a really cool sponsor giveaway coming up this week so starting maybe tomorrow or monday we're going to do a 250 dollar giveaway from our sponsor all you have to do is sign up to their um to the, to the sponsor it's at busser so b-u-s-r link will be in the description below and you know we're going to roll that over on the weekend and hopefully into the week get you guys some good money get you guys some opportunities to bet 
uh, through this awesome sports book. They have player prop bets. They have everything that's going to be super, super fun. And I, we're going to be, uh, I'm going to be showcasing some of my bets, what I'm looking to do. Um, so I'm really hyped about it, guys. So we'll be doing that competition over the weekend and throughout the, the next week, maybe Monday, Tuesday. So keep an eye on that. $250 for free they're giving away. So make sure to bet on that. Also, if you sign up and deposit $100, they're literally matching your bet for free. So if you put $100 in there, make a $100 bet, they're good, literally going to match it for free so you don't lose any money. And then you can roll over and continue to play and do whatever you got to do. And if you win, you're walking away with some free cash and then you can continue building your your portfolio. So I'll be dropping my uh, my bets throughout the throughout the episodes as well. So I hope you guys enjoy that. Um, but make sure to enjoy tomorrow, Sunday. We'll have you guys with the post-game analysis and recap as always, my friends. Make sure to subscribe below on Apple, Spotify, and YouTube. Hope you enjoyed the quick update today. Trying to feel better, trying to get through this. My voice definitely hurting right now, but I got you guys covered. No question about it. Enjoy the rest of your night. We'll catch you guys later. Thank you.